Does that get started? I think so, yeah. I think we have to. Yeah, get started? <laughs> yes, midnight. Or, excuse me, you are mint now. So, okay. I have midnight. mint, ivy, ivy is dem, mint is midnight, Canadian birds is goose, and siren. <laughs> siren, what is a short way to say? Uh, I keep Claro. To... Claro? Claro. Uh, Claro so... or Claro then. Because for some reason, I keep wanting to say Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, it's you always need those short versions of the names for like <laughs> for the DM. I can never yeah. remember my own players' names whenever I DM'd. Okay, but yeah, this is I, I. I don't know who of you have seen this. This is not. I tried to get the word out. This is not a super like combat heavy scenario so you're not going to be like plowing through hordes of monsters you're going to be doing a bunch of random stuff too so mm -hmm. i get to cook <laughs> do you get to cook i don't know i mean can you you're the dm I after mean, all. I, i've got a bunch of artisans <laughs> tools on me so <laughs> i can wait i can have can, them on me now he, sure. here's the thing can you convince someone to let you touch their kitchen uh, I have rustic hospitality. I will just ask them if they can let us in to um. touch them. <laughs> yes, but does rustic hospitality work on nobles? Uh, if they're rustic enough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the gray skies aren't oh considered rustic. Looks like you took the I same have, background as me. I have my popular demand. Because I'm an entertainer, technically. Oh, yeah, you probably could convince someone to do that, but it is a party in the kitchen's kind of full so we'll see Let's get i don't know that it will become relevant but you could try also we're recording okay <laughs> all right nice. so good just for the record oh <laughs> just, just for the <laughs> all right so it is midwinter in rain and Every year, the Grey Skies hold a huge midwinter gala. They invite nobles from all across Rain. Some of the commoners get invitations. People travel from the plains, from all across Phonum, to come here for this huge party. It's not everybody can get in the door. So there's a, a certain cachet to getting into this party. And if you're from Rain proper, you need to have an invitation to this party. And this year, one of the main events of the party is a uh, an up-and-coming reindeer singer named Fawn Crystalhoof. And she is well-known in rain now, but her popularity is becoming spread across Phonum, and this is her first major performance at an event, and everyone is trying to come see her sing. So, rain is, is packed this year. Um, and you guys have all come to receive invitations to um, the Grey Sky Midwinter Gala. And when you come into rain, you come into the merchant district. It's, it's several hours before the party um, and you can wander around the city freely. Um, parts of the city are blocked off right now because of the festival. Um, there are smaller parties going on throughout town. Um, there are market stalls opened everywhere selling any number of things if you need to go shopping. Um, otherwise, you can wait for a couple of hours um, until the party rolls around and they open the gates up to the villa and start letting everyone in. Um, does anyone need to do any shopping or anything like that? Well, uh, if I could. My... <laughs> I know you're my... all third level poor, so. Yeah, uh, my character would like to go around and learn more information, potentially, 
about this gala and this city in general. Okay. I'll do what I can. Where would you like to go? Would you like to try and find um, just random townsfolk? Would you like to speak to um, some of the people with their little pop-up stands? Would you like to talk to um, like guards? Who are you uh, looking for? I would like to talk to uh, some elder because elders typically are knowledgeable and I will elders. ask them. They have seen much and knowledge is power. Okay. So uh, you stumble across an older looking reindeer just kind of hobbling around with his young grandchild in attendance. Do you just approach him or how do uh, you? I go up to them and then I uh, use my, <laughs> um, my psychic powers to, in his mind, ask him more questions about this situation my telepathy uh yeah i just asked that in his brain and I'll, I'll see how he responds he stops he looks around tries to figure out where it's coming from notices you staring intently at him yeah kind of gives you this side eye mm -hmm. mutters rude and trots off Darn. <laughs> That's a shame. Can I insight that situation to, to, to see what I got from that? <laughs> Were you reading his mind or just sending him questions? Just sending him questions, but I wanted to look at his body language and all, you know? You know sure, get, go ahead. Get... Roll, me, roll me an insight check then. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have advantage because of uh, one of the mystics things, but... Um, two... So I'm just going to, and then I'm going to try again. OK. So he was pissed off. That makes sense. This is, <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that his grandchild was there and it was midwinter, he'd have called the guards on you because that is extremely rude, just putting words into someone's head when you have no idea who they are. What? But that's normal where I come from. What are these people Not talking here. about? I know. My character's dumb. <laughs> so, yeah, you're lucky it's midwinter. You probably would have just gotten hauled in front of the guard. That's great. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't get that. <laughs> All right. Is there anything anybody else wants to do besides psychically assaulting locals? <laughs> I... I I, I want to gonna... prepare my spells because apparently I forgot to do that. Oh. oh, hush, you prepared your spells. We know you did. Yes, I prepared my spells. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Birds, what did you say? Uh, I'm going to go uh, shopping for Cook's utensils and brewer supplies. How much those are? Cook's utensils and brewer supplies. Do you I know how much they are? I will check. Okay. So you are going to find um, not necessarily a store that specifically sells those two items at the same time but there are merchants who sell alcoholic beverages and bakers and things and you can convince them to um sell you their some of their equipment it may not necessarily be in the greatest of shape but you could still try and convince them if you'd like to see if they will sell you um some of their supplies now it might be a little pricier keep in mind it is midwinter uh, if you want to roll, I can uh, try and find. Uh, sure. That's persuasion. Um. Yeah, I would. I would go with like persuasion. Oh. Oh yeah, that brewer is not selling you anything. He'll sell you alcohol, all the alcohol you want, but he's not selling any of his equipment. What alcohol? Do you want to see if you can get a little luckier with the baker, or? Uh... Oh sure. I know where I'm going. You're gonna buy alcohol, aren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, much better. So, the baker will sell you. Some of their supplies will say
four silver will get you some generic like baking supplies. Sounds good. I don't know what the actual price is, but I'll just <laughs> it's baking supplies. I can go to the store and buy a bag of flour for a dollar. So sounds good. I'll take it. All right. Anybody else want to do anything yes. besides buying alcohol midnight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to buy alcohol and get drunk and take a minus one to all of your rolls for being drunk. Okay, look. <laughs> take a look at the back of my sheet and scroll to the very bottom left. Oh no, you have the ability to get drunk yeah. and get bonuses. No, from you... I wish. Um, the back. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you want to get completely sloshed and take a minus one to all of your rolls? I mean, there is a catch to this in that I have no money. Oh. You could, if you roll me a nat 20, you can con the alcohol guy out of enough alcohol to get you slightly inebriated for no money. But you have to roll a nat 20. And if I roll uh, kind of well, can I just uh, sell some, like, say, my sell some bolts or something? <laughs> some crossbow bolts? Hell yeah! <laughs> you can you, uh, you can use if, them as marshmallow toasters. If you get if you roll an eighteen or higher, and I'm talking on the die, if you roll an eighteen or higher, he will trade you some bolts. For alcohol. If you roll a nat 20, he will give you enough alcohol to get tipsy. 18 or higher, he will give you a drink. Let's see. With guidance? <laughs> no. You have to just <laughs> roll it flat out. Just roll that d20. Flat. Flat. Okay. And this isn't persuasion. This is just a d20. Just, just roll a d20. No. Nope, sorry. He kind of laughs at you, and he thinks you're drunk already. Oh. <laughs> Mance is just staring at the merchant. Just throws him Brother. off with a little and he just trots away. Uh, Brother Goose, do you need some alcohol? I have some money. Uh, no. Actually, okay. I don't need any money. Or okay. Not oh, okay. Sorry. Mint uh, is your alcoholic here. Okay, sorry. Mint. Mint, do you need a lot of mints after that alcohol? Yeah. I remember. Uh, do you require money for uh, alcohol? I have some spare coin that I can lend you. Look, I may be a cleric, but I'm not a church. <laughs> okay. You keep them out of for yourself. Okay. Somebody's feisty today. Somebody, uh... Okay, birds, um, you're Goose, and Dem is Ivy, Midnight is Mint, and Siren sense. is Claridon. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm trying my best to remember all that. Um... I mean, I, I even Why don't you guys, like, actually, because I know nobody's actually seen Siren's character sheet. Why don't you guys actually introduce yourself a little bit? For your own sakes, not just mine. I didn't even think about asking for that. Also changing the uh, nickname to the uh, actual character name. Oh, that's Hi, a good I'm idea. Mitch, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently! <laughs> Trading away your weapons for alcohol. I'm not sure that's the decision. My name's Gus. And I, I'm a, f I'm a famous food critic. Goes around and travels the world, tasting local cuisines. I also. Uh, you cut out at the very end. I, s I also cook. I'm very <laughs> good at cooking. Uh, my name is Ivy. I am but a traveling mystic of the order of the, uh, Soul Knife. I wish to learn, and I wish to spread my knowledge. A bit more I 
honestly have no clue as to uh I created the backstory for this character, but I have no clue as to um you know, let's try something ridiculous. Oh, uh, the name's Clarendon. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. That no, was no, probably no. not. Uh, it was your fine. Name is now Claire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was fine. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's. Guess we're going with that then. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, anybody else need anything to do? Oh, also, I'm a, heal- I'm a healer, I'm a tank, and I'm a damage dealer, so... <laughs> I'm not just an alcoholic. <laughs> I show sauce. Saucy. <laughs> and this is the, um... The debuffer and buffer. Claire. <laughs> Claire <laughs> is a bard. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Um, anybody have anything else they need to do um, before the party starts? Um, Claridon is probably going to... Um, or just to double check, uh, would we actually uh, go into town with any kind of currency? Um, whatever you've got left. I mean, you had third-level currency, so... Oh, I'd never roll for that. third-level currency... You're third level. Why wouldn't you get third level currency? Um, did you I, midnight? Did uh, you just go with thing. starting uh, money? I, I think you're. Start, I think you're thinking of Pathfinder, where you start with a certain amount of currency based on your level. You're probably right. Where in Five E, you get this much money, money, and then from your background, yeah. For, yeah. And then there's one to five uh, starting stuff. There's five to eleven starting stuff. Or was it five, no, five to ten starting stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so apparently nobody gave themselves any sort of actual money. So whatever <laughs> your background gave you that you didn't spend on stuff, you can buy things with. Okay, hey, fifteen gold minus gold. four silver. Someone just set up a uh, firework nearby. Apologies Ooh. if that uh, yeah. becomes frequent. Eh, it won't bother me. We'll just say it's people shooting in the background. It, it, <laughs> rain has become Detroit. Oh. <laughs> cannon fire rings in the distance. <laughs> well, hey, f- what, what's hey, a festival about like fireworks? Cannon <laughs> fire. Ain't my cannon. Okay. Um, Clarendon, you need to go anywhere or? Um, Clarendon will probably try to look for a, um, a tinker's or mechanic shop for just, um, getting some spare parts. Okay. You, you'll find that, um, it's mostly just going to be like a secondhand shop and they'll just be scattered stuff. Not necessarily a specific tinker, um, unless you're trying to find like tinker's tools. In which case you'll actually have to hunt down an actual tinker. Uh, yeah, Clarendon's just, um, he's just, basically just looking for his spare parts just in case his, uh, his massive machine on his back, uh, wears out. Okay, so you'll find a, you'll find a tinker shop to get random spare bits that will, will, uh, fix that if you have any issue, we'll save five silver. Um, again, the question of currency comes up, so should I just... Whatever your starting gold was, I mean, you're gonna get you're gonna get any number of X X Y Z gold depending on what you spent. So, uh, starting gold was again. Based I, on background. Yeah, I also have ten gold if you need it. Because that's the thing is that I didn't actually choose a proper official background. Mm, you can start with I don't know what's the average starting gold like. It's like ten. Yeah, you can start with ten gold. All right. So you've got you've got the money there necessary to uh, um, buy spare bits and parts and things. All right. In that case, then uh, he'll uh, hoof over the uh, t- or ten silver. You said. Uh, I said five, but yeah, if it's if it's or, you're looking for actually bigger stuff, 
Yeah. Probably more like 10 silver. Uh, yeah, we'll just... Regardless of the uh, the stuff he gets, he'll probably just give the uh, the ten silver regardless. Okay. All right, so he now has random bits. <laughs> All right, so it's getting late. You've been wandering around town looking at different things, shopping, trying to get drunk and failing at it. Um, and the, the sun has started to go down, and it's, it's time for the party to begin. You hear... Um, horns and trumpets outside of the uh, gray sky villa announcing that you know to all the goers that it's time for the party to start and you go through and you proceed through the doorway you hand over your invitations as you come in um and you are led upstairs by an elderly reindeer um manservant um you and a bunch of other guests are led upstairs directly to um, the ballroom where Fawn will be performing. Um, it is decorated beautifully. Um, there are lights everywhere. And I, are ice sprites visible? Yes. Okay. There are ice sprites because there are so many reindeer in attendance. There are ice sprites, you know, just gallivanting around the ballroom, adding their own sort of sparkle and shimmer to the room itself. Um, this this the villa is decorated to the nine, but you'll also notice around the outside of the room are um, a set of private guards in in house gray sky colors, um, just keeping watch over the crowd as well as um, scattered city watch, both some in um, more party like attire, um, and some in uniform, just patrolling. Um, the party, just to make sure no uh, undesirables cause any issues or break in. There are more, if you look out the windows, you'll see more guards patrolling the grounds and things. Um, the majority of the masses are actually outside of the house, outside of the uh, gates, listening through open windows and things. Um, whereas you guys have been invited into the inner sanctum of the house where you can listen directly. Um up on the in the front of the ballroom is a dais and with a uh, harpsichord and um, Amalia and Victoria Gray Sky are up on there w welcoming everyone into the room as they, they come in um, they have two younger children with them um, they seem to be very young, seven, eight years old. I don't know. I don't know reindeer ages. Hush, <laughs> midnight. Don't judge. They're very young for reindeer. They're they're very childlike, and they are fidgeting, and they're obviously not. Um, it's a party. They're in itchy, starchy attire. Um, but something seems a little off. At first glance, I, I guarantee you guys passive perceptions are high enough to, to notice that something seems a little off. Does anybody want to look a little further into this kind of, you know? Uh, what part of this looks off? Like one of the people? There's or... no liquor. <laughs> oh, no, Midnight. There's there's liquor. It's a party. It's a house gray sky party. Of course there's alcohol. Um, that depends on your perception check. Okay, I would and like yeah, to make I'm a perception check. Going to roll that. Did I? Yeah, I forgot to get perception. Usually, I get perception. I forgot to do that. No. Hmm. Darn. Well, seeing as um, Goose, our resident uh, chef who hobnobs with the elite a lot and has seen people yeah, in a lot of awkwardly uncomfortable situations as he's criticizing everything they've ever made uh, mm -hmm. with their restaurants and food, <laughs> notices that it's not just like starchy, uncomfortable, there's a lot of people in my house. 
one of the children is very upset. She seems like she's she's nervous and under some form of duress. Um. Uh, just to double check, how many people are in this uh, room in general? It's packed. There's a lot of people. It, it's a party. It's a very large party in a very large bar. I won't say it's standing room only, but it's standing room only. <laughs> everyone who's everyone has come here to hear and sing, and it, it's it's making this um it's not exactly easy to get across this ballroom because there's there's a lot of people standing around the dais, so you guys are kind of seeing this at this point still at a distance. You've just come into the room. Um, um, what did Fortune notice? Because that is at least one off. Fourteen just kind of notices that something's off because in this the DC to notice that she's um upset is a fifteen. Uh, <laughs> was this inf- was this information shared with the rest of us? Yes. Uh, she 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 looks kind of upset over there. You see. Oh, I will see. Uh, I would like to use my uh, psionic um, <laughs> uh, view or aura. Uh, I would, as an action, you study one creature's aura for an hour uh, until your concentration ends. While you can see the target, you I'm, learn. I'm sorry. Does it say an hour? No, no, that's concentration for an hour. So you could do it for an hour. Uh, it's current. You don't. It's not like a ritual that takes an hour. It's current hit point total and it's basic emotional state. I would like to do that. Do you have to roll for that, or is that just a? That's just a. You, you get it. I mean, if I'm going to make any other insight checks or charisma checks, uh, I have advantage. But um, that's what it says on the the thing. I can... Out of the result, Mint is going to start to approach the child. Okay. Now keep in mind, she is up on a dais with her family of House Grey Sky. As close as she can. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you do you know uh, reindeer um, etiquette? Fuck, I took Lux, and I, as, I took and Lux as for ratio. Your, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and as for your um, your check to notice, so it, it steadies her, so she's not as emotionally duress. Is that what it does? No, 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 no. I, I just learn more about their emotional state. So you using that, you you find out that she is like in a state of childhood like panic to it to a child everything is the worst possible oh. thing that could happen but to her this is has gone above and beyond that oh wow something as terrible has happened uh i she, also share that info with the rest of the group <laughs> yeah so she is very uh, now Mint is very not worried at this point <laughs> May I also know the current hit point total? <laughs> of a child? Yeah, she's, you never know. She's got like two hit points. Good to know. Good to I know. Don't... That that means we shouldn't have anyone attack them. I don't we think must... she actually has two hit points. I don't necessarily know that there's statistics. It's two hit points for... now. It's two hit points now. <laughs> so is the DM. <laughs> the, the poor unicorn child with two hit points. Ouch. Wow. Either and they if had he a lot looks of looks at her wrong, she's gonna die. Yeah. Uh they either had a lot of hit points and then got attacked by something, or or you know, just small hit points. <laughs> none of the none of the other um doesn't look like any of the other stuff, the magical or psionic effects will ping off on anything. It's just the um the emotional yeah, I'm um, sorry if I'm slowing this down a little bit. No, but, no, it's yeah. okay, it's okay. Um, uh, okay, I mean, you, so... Uh, I literally put in chat if you wanted to look more at it. That's what I was looking at. Um, Alright, so, Mint, was, as you are 
Go ahead. Um, Mint, you said you were approaching the stage, right? Yeah, but only up to the point at the most, wherever the closest person is. Okay, and you're going to leave everybody else behind, or is everybody going to approach the stage? Mint doesn't really care if anyone else is coming or not. Is everybody <laughs> going to let Mint go up there by herself and possibly piss off the host? I'm going to come up there as well, because I'm a reindeer, and I know reindeer etiquette. Uh, Claridon will probably also approach. These people seem wise. I will follow them. <laughs> okay, so as you guys are approaching... Um, suddenly the crowd clusters together a little tighter. You can't make it all the way up there um, because Fawn has come out on stage and she's dressed in just this gorgeous, glittering, sparkly dress and she is she looks radiant and she is supremely pleased with herself that she has um, become the main event at this year's Midwinter Festival. And she holds out a hoof to kind of quiet the crowd down. And she um, she waits until everything is just at a, a dead silence. And she just looks out among the crowd. Just You can tell she's enjoying this moment. Like, not like, I'm so pleased with myself. She is just enjoying the power she has that all of these people are standing there silent in front of her. And all of a sudden, with absolutely no accompaniment from anything, she just starts singing. And it is this majestic voice. And it enthralls. If you look around, you can tell the crowd is enthralled. If you yourself are not enthralled. I also am. Um, I am more focused on something else. Okay. Um, she she sings this this song and and it almost seems like as she's singing, the room itself starts to get brighter, um, and and everything in the room starts to sparkle and become almost more beautiful, um, and Dem, are you still? concentrating on the view aura or yeah why not you know, you know keep keep that concentration up okay so <laughs> actually how far away am i from the girl now you're probably within 15 feet i'd say i'm stopping the crowd has become packed kind of tight because fawns come out and she started singing Doesn't so the matter. crowd is kind of clustered as close to the stage as they can so you're probably in total 15 feet away from the dais but there is a gap between the start of the crowd and the dais itself uh mint is going to use message and whisper my child are you all right what troubles you <sighs> are you sure you want to not be afraid <laughs> Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> she is in a kind of panic state. Um, well, you see, the thing is, it's not like she'll be noticed doing that. Because everyone's too busy looking at Juan. <laughs> <laughs> So, what the heck is this child's name? You can make it up. No, she actually has a name. And I'm not changing it. Um, <laughs> Elzarina, that's her name. Elzarina. I know her brother's name, but not hers. Elzarina, when you speak to her, she kind of, like, if she could fly, she'd fly. She jumps, and she starts I mean, frantically. They, they, can, they can fly. But, yeah. <laughs> Hush. I say she she's a child. I say she can't fly. She's a young child. She's not allowed to fly yet. She's under... She's not, she's grounded. Ah! You're grounded. <laughs> that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> okay, sorry, I couldn't resist. She, she jumps and she freaks out. She's trying to stay quiet because she knows if she, she screws up this moment... 
um, her parents will be upset with her. Um, Immediately as but, she does that, uh, another message uh, is basically just frantically trying to calm her down. She doesn't know where this voice is coming from. She doesn't know who it is. There's this horde of people. She's very nervous and panicked. She's going to um, basically what amounts to hide behind her mother. Because she has no idea what's going on. And this is freaking her out even more. Because she's in a state of panic. And this voice has just come into her head. Child. Please. It's alright. Can she respond to message? Yes, she can. Uh, every time she sends a message, she can send one response. You get in response. Go away. Who are you? I don't want you alone. <laughs> There's a lot of telepathy happening in this <laughs> session. So you're trying to message um, Elzarina throughout Fawn's song, right? Only Fawn's song. Right. Okay. So as Fawn's song comes to a close and the crowd breaks into applause, um, what do you guys want to do? I also applause. I applaud as well. Okay. That's just cool. Um, okay. I don't think I was paying attention to the song. <laughs> oh. However, I smile in Mint's direction. What the hell? I, I smile I in Elzelina's direction. In Mint's direction, sorry. <laughs> I smile in my own direction. <laughs> I don't I even want to know how neck. that looks. You probably look like one constipated alpaki. No, I have a long enough neck to do it. Just That's all. <laughs> Oh no. Um, so as um, as the applause starts to die down, Fawn is just bathing in this. And you um, she she waits for it to quiet down because like I said, she's definitely enjoying this. And all of a sudden she speaks. I want to share with you this song, my great great grandmother. Uh, passed down to me. It is a. It said to be a spell uh, for happiness, um, and it has not been heard for many, many years. Um, but I, I decided tonight would be the perfect night to share it. Um, and as the crowd quiets again, and she starts singing. All of a sudden, though, partway through the song. As the glow begins to to shed throughout the room again, she shrieks, just dead stop singing, just shrieks and stumbles. Immediately starts Graceful. looking around for trouble. What? Immediately starts looking around where I'm standing for trouble. Okay, who wants to look for trouble? Uh, may as well. <laughs> I want to see trouble. Or not. Midnight sees no trouble. <laughs> we have well, Ivy and Claro see trouble. Goose does not see trouble. <laughs> Midnight is too distracted by this worried child. Goose is too busy stuffing his face with all these tasty treats because they have brought in some of the best chefs. Yes. So you're you're <laughs> so entranced with just trying out. Every plate of food that comes by you, you don't even notice. You're going I to mean, Flavor Town today. Yes. <laughs> Almost as good as my Uncle Svan. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy and Claro, you notice that an imp has latched onto Fawn and is attacking her. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> And as it does so, the the um, the light in the room that she's been emitting this time it, it dims. Are you guys going to tell your companions? What are you going to do? How are you going to react? Keep in mind, this is happening very quickly, and she is being attacked. Uh, I would like to roll initiative and uh, start combat to kill that imp that is attacking her. So you're going to shove through the world unless the DM says so. I'm sorry. What did you it's, say? I said so. You're gonna, you're gonna wait. Me or, or midnight? 
I did not hear what Midnight just said. Um, initiative apologize. isn't rolled unless the DM says so. Okay, I would like to uh, try to start. I would try to get that thing off of her. Um, okay. Actually, would um, would a hold person in this particular case uh, actually do anything? On an imp? I don't know. Uh, are imps humanoid? Uh, no, they are not. Then, yeah, no. they are not a person that I found that out in large person, hold person. That doesn't work unless you're a humanoid. Yeah. All right. It's very specific. Um, so we have one person who's going to push through the crowd and try and attack the imp. Um, anyone else have anything else they want to do? If I'm focused um, on the child. child, what's the child doing? She has noticed this imp and her panic has intensified a thousandfold. I'm following her eyes right now. So, okay, that's going to take you some time to react because you're reacting to her reaction. So, okay. Um, anyone else going to try and uh, stop this imp? Um... Claridon is actually going to go ahead and try to cast um, Healing Words on uh, Fawn. Healing Word on Fawn. Okay. So, um, everyone else is going to have to delay around because you didn't notice. Uh, well, Siren and um, um, Ivy, you'll get to go, and the imp has already attacked Fawn, so um, I'm going to have everybody roll initiative, and then um, Dem and Siren, you guys will get to go, and then everyone will get to go on the next round. Everyone else will go. will go down in order the next round. Right. So, like surprise? Not necessarily surprise, because it's, it's technically just we're out you're. Of the initiative. Um, the imp has already attacked Fawn, so. Okay, just checking. Got it. the heck is the imps initiative modifier i have your stupid thing right here it should be just dex yeah i, I didn't I don't, i'm not sure because you never know sometimes they do have buffs to that mm -hmm. i i get the yeah. most dexterity in the entire party and i still get the lowest roll <laughs> that makes you feel better <laughs> you go everybody goes before the imp good I think unless somebody rolled miserably, did everybody get above a six? Uh, looks like it. <laughs> the imp goes last. All right. Ivy, what are you going to do? Oh, man. Am I first? Uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, summon my uh, psychic, my soul knives with, as my bonus action with sharpen the blade uh, okay. to make them slightly more powerful. And then I'm going to uh, whack it <laughs> with my soul knife, or at least attempt to. Uh, plus, let's see, three plus two is five, six. No, six, six, six. Darn. No. Ouch. Uh-oh. Ouch. Okay, so I miss. Um, Roll me again. I want to see if you hit Fawn with that knife. Oh, are we playing with fumbles? You just I mean, that's one, also a Pathfinder you're... thing. <laughs> okay. It, I, I mean, well, I, I don't Christian usually fumble, but in this... Style. I don't particularly... What? What? Oh. Holy crap, it still happens! How? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a 1 in 20 chance. It, 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 roll me a percentile. Roll me a 1d100. 50. <laughs> um, below uh, 50, you, 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 you don't hit her. Oh my and word, she really doesn't want this to happen. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I guess that uh, healing will come in handy then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is like when you, you're trying to slap a bug off someone's back and it doesn't it, work. Out. Literally, this imp is attached to her neck. If if it was in melee with Did her, I kill like, her? I, no, it, you didn't melee. hit her. You didn't okay. hit her. You rolled okay. low, so you didn't hit her. If okay, you rolled good. over Pretty fifty, you would have you would have nicked her in the neck. Okay. Okay. The only reason I did this if if he if she had just been fighting with him, but he's literally attached to her neck right now, biting her. 
Okay. So that was why I did that. <laughs> so, okay. You nearly killed Fawn before she could <laughs> even get into Act 3. That would have been bad. You don't want to know what happened. Canceled, you people. murdered Fawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cole. So, Siren. Um, Claro, um, you are going to cast Healing Word on Fawn? Uh, yeah, he's going to um, flip a switch on the uh, massive machine on his back and a, a mix of droning sounds uh, comes from it as it starts casting Healing Words. Okay, so people are starting to like move away from you, Claro, as you do this. Because this thing is making weird noises and they, they don't know what it's doing and it looks like it's going to explode probably on them because they don't know. <laughs> Oh, my dear. Okay. And this is, oh, this is a bonus action. So this would be, all right. Ooh, um, sorry for the ignorance, but um, this says, uh, plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Oh, no, never mind. That's charisma. Never mind. Mm -hmm. So that would be that. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah. So Fawn has taken a massive amount of damage because this imp managed to do some pretty serious damage to her, but she's not dead. She's just injured. So those hit points do help a lot. Um, but she's she's stumbled now down to the ground. Um, and the guards are starting to react. But they're further back in the crowd than you guys are. Um, so I want you guys. So let's see. Um, um, got. Jeez, everybody. Claro, you go. It's so it's Claro. Can somebody type this out faster than I can? It's Claro, then um, Ivy, then Goose, and then Mint. Okay. Thank you. You're much faster at that than I am. <laughs> All right. So, um, do we want to start at the top of the turn order? Or since um, if only just because I just went, it might be a good idea to go to. Um someone else or well it's up to you okay what um it, it doesn't matter to me if you want to try something else um well action is always a thing yeah yeah let's see um let's go ahead and do this um i'm gonna go ahead and do a vicious mockery on the imp. Okay. Does he get a saving throw <laughs> for vicious mockery? Um. Yes, it's a uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay. So he just flips it another switch and then uses his magic to uh, depress some keys on the uh, machine, and it just creates this discordant sound that just shoots over to the imp. I think this is how I do it. So, what's your DC on that uh, wisdom save there? Uh, say again. What's the uh, the DC on that wisdom save for? Uh... Uh, um, it doesn't say what the uh, DC, uh, but the DC guess... should be uh, ten plus your modifier 13. plus the spell level. No, plus uh, proficiency it's bonus. Eight plus proficiency bonus plus spell modifier. So ten uh, plus modifier. It's eleven. It, it's. Because uh, it says, um, so I'm sure trust me, people, it's 13. At, yeah, it says at 13. third level, I'm pretty sure 17 meets beats, so. Pretty sure. Regardless, it probably would have uh, succeeded against well, it's, uh, it, the saving. Well, it did. It's a 17, so at third uh, level, I'm pretty sure 17 does meet beat. Um, okay, so does anything happen if it beats the saving throw on Vicious Mockery? Um... No, it just if it beats it, then nothing happens. Okay, Ivy. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do an attack and an offhand weapon attack. Okay. Um, 
So you're going to move up there and try and carve this thing off a fox neck? Well, I mean, I was already up there. Or at okay, least I well, thought I was because I yeah. almost stabbed her. Uh, <laughs> In before that one. <laughs> Yay. That's too bad. Oh, you hit it! Cool. Uh, 1d8 plus 4. Yay, I got a one there. Uh, oh my God. And, and I'm going to do an offhand weapon Bippy. attack. Bippy, no, why? It's the, curse of Bippy. it's the curse of the unlucky cow. <laughs> and I probably missed there. Oh my God, there's another Oh now. my word. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> no. No. Am I am I putting this in wrong? Am I like doing the like no, you know the the you're short doing cut? It right. that one? That's the sad thing. <laughs> the short uh, cut. Can I can I get a different seed on this RNG? <laughs> I'm not feeling it. Oh my god. It's okay. I'll live unless unless I don't unless I get killed by these guards for uh, stabbing this lady. Well, you haven't stabbed fun yet, so the guards think you're helping. So okay. Oh, I'm by the way, that was that was psychic damage. Move. <laughs> uh also i forgot to get my psychic uh my soul blade was psychic damage if that changes anything um uh, i don't know that that's considered because it's psychic damage i don't think it's considered a magical effect is it Min it is not if i recall okay i mean i, I know they're like blades of like oh no it's just energy. it's just saving throws so it doesn't um okay J okay just check oh it's not a magical attack i don't think so i'll have to check uh, I mean, you can rule it right now. Um, like I'm gonna say it's psychic energy from my hands. Is it actually a weapon or is it a spell that you're casting to make manifest this? It's not technically a spell. Um, your third, your third level. It doesn't specify that it's magical at this point. I'm assuming so. I'm gonna say it's not. So, um, yeah, I don't DR, think psychic is. Dr. Cuts is. it in half, right? Midnight. Uh, uh, resistance cuts it in half. Sorry, I, did, I, I didn't hear you. I was uh, DR cuts in DR cuts damage in half, right? Uh, it doesn't give me a specific DR. Uh, damage resistance cuts damage in half. Round okay. It down. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I you were phrasing it differently than what I know. Okay. You forget I'm Pathfinder. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so that puts us also, at goose uh, here. Okay. Goose, what are you going to do? So, Goose, he's at the table, right? He he notices all the commotion that's going, going on. He looks at uh, Fawn. So he's going to try to walk over or whatever and try to... Is the is the imp still stuck on? Yeah. He's gonna the try imp to basically just took like a needle poke at this point. That's about it. Uh, Goose is going to try to uh, pull him off. Okay. How would I do that? That would be a contested strength check, I believe. Ooh. Your strength, you roll strength versus I roll strength. Oh, good. That's uh, just a uh, plus modifier, right? 1d20 plus zero? Yep. God, switching back and forth between this and the GM chat is kind of... Oh. <laughs> You still stand a chance. If I can do this right, thank you. That would be nice. Oh, oh, oh! Huh? You, it got an eight. Dang it! <laughs> it's a minus two modifier. What? And it's still rolled higher. Oh my god! Why can't we roll? Well? <laughs> okay, work. so you have tried to pull this imp off, and it, it's not letting go. Its teeth are sunk into her neck. This is a better one. I'm too fat. <laughs> Just call the imp uh, fat. Cool. Okay, so you've tried to pull this imp off, and it is not coming loose. And as you do, Fawn shrieks and takes an extra point of damage because basically this thing is now sawing through her neck because you're pulling on it. I know I'm gonna have to heal it. Uh. <laughs> All right, Mint. 
Can you save Fawn? Because nobody else apparently can. Oh, my word. Y'all are terrible at saving another, people. Fawn can survive another round of attack by the imp, don't, unless the imp crits. So don't worry too much about that necessarily, but... Um, Let's see. Suddenly I'm regretting not taking magic missile. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Poor Fawn. I could do that. Mm. Although, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to look up the effect again, because I don't have that on me. Oh, there it is. I do have that on me, I guess. Only question is, is it single target? Okay, so this has a chance of being stupid. No. At this point... <laughs> the way not as rolling. stupid as what happened back there with all the nat ones. Uh, actually, it does have that potential, but well, now so I'm glad I didn't I'm going bump to the cast chaos combat bolt, encounters. Ca casting chaos bolt on the end. Okay. Is it magic? Yes, however, the damage type is random. <laughs> yeah. That could be good or bad. Exactly. That's a fun that's a fun spell. Sounds I've never fun. used it before, though. It's gonna be great. A little complicated. <laughs> I mean, it's not as complicated as uh, using the what's it called? Oh whatever. Pathfinder grappling no, the rules. Invention wizard, which is <laughs> I just had to make somebody this, roll a percentile to not kill a reindeer. Yeah, it can't be that crazy. So range it's not that crazy. spell attack for the sorcerer would be oh I've got my spell attack wrong on this. It says int mod. Let's change that. Sorry, I keep hitting the thing with. Okay, okay I see. Okay, so it did four. actually take. I'm looking back at the. That it did actually take. From that, because it's psychic damage. Hmm. Mm mm. You don't hit it. Hmm. You did not. Wait, but that's without proficiency. Yeah, you're going to want to add that on there. Your proficiency is plus two at the moment. That is enough to hit. <laughs> that, meets, that, meets, that meets the AC. <laughs> okay, time for fun. <laughs> oh, no. Now, the question is, is it going to be a resisted type of damage? Well, let's... See, I'm gonna hit the target takes two years plus only six, so the real t question isn't that. The oh, yeah, actual question yeah. is will it bounce? <gasps> and, and kill her. <laughs> oh no! Don't kill no. Fawn! Killing Fawn is bad. It will not bounce. <laughs> oh, we okay. actually have gotten really lucky with the types. Uh, one of them is psychic. I think, yeah. Psychic's okay, so bad. what is this? What is this doing? Uh, You're no, going to have to explain. Uh, so, number rolled on the. So wait, that's uh, for each. That's one for each type. Hmm. Oh, yeah, choose one of the D8s. Okay. 
So psychic is okay. Not good, so don't I get that it one. So it's either psychic or cold. Pick. Yeah. Eh, wish it were force, but guess it's not. Uh, if psychic's out, then I have to use. No, it took it took full damage from uh, the psychic. Full damage. I'm using oh. psychic then. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. How much damage does it take? Fourteen. Takes fourteen total damage. Yeah. Yeah, it's dead. Nice. <laughs> nice. We did it. It, w it w had ten hit points. The problem was nobody was hitting it. That sure is a problem. <laughs> I'm not foreseeing the rest of the scenario going well. That alpaca out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All of a sudden, this coruscating wave of psychic energy just slams into the imp, and it just kind of like goes and yeah. flops off of her neck, like twitching and drooling on the ground until it its eyes just go black, and it just fades into nothingness. Uh, that's unpleasant. <laughs> I nod solemnly to you, respecting your psychic abilities. <laughs> <laughs> that managed to do more random. damage than the actual psychic character. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, that could have been know. bad. How's Fawn doing? I, I mean, I, I could fly, and then you could uh, bet out and respect me, but... Mm. <laughs> Fawn is alive she's not in danger of dying um the the town guard are have finished their rush up to the stage because like i said they were mostly around the they finished their rush up to the stage and one of them is working on goes to work on stabilizing fawn can i um, give her a uh healing draft you don't necessarily need to um, because, like I said, the, the town guards don't don't waste your abilities. The town guards are stabilizing her. And, um, but the crowd at, the, at this point has begun to react to this, this imp. And while you guys were fighting it, you were so concentrated on the fight. But the crowd has started to panic and pulling away from the stage and backing up. Um, and as the imp has died and the guards get up there, the captain of the guard, who is there in kind of a dress uniform, steps up and he um, gestures to his people by, that are still by the doors. And he, in a loud, booming voice, no one is leaving. The, the problem is taken care of. You all calm down. Remain calm. The city guard has this under control. And the people kind of stop and turn because the man has a very uh, commanding presence and his very loud voice. They stop and they turn and they realize that the imp is down. And they see the city guard up around Fawn. And there's a little smattering of applause uh, for a moment that quickly dies down because everybody starts staring at the people that are clapping. Um, and the captain of the guard kind of gestures because obviously he knows you guys were uh, the ones that were able to react faster and he kind of gestures to you guys to approach him um, and, and come closer he's not directly beside Fawn for those of you that were in melee um, and for those of you further away do you approach the town guard uh, the, the guard captain. Uh, yeah, Clarion will uh, approach. Yes. Okay. Though, while approaching, uh, Mint makes sure uh, her voice can be heard as she says out loud, Ah, oh, yes, a moment. And she goes over there. Just to make sure that the child can hear and figure out who it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. How, how's the child feeling, by the way? You know, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still technically concentrating on that. I, I don't think. know. We're, are you concentrating? 
You were Emma, just trying. You used not a soul to... knife just now. Is you that used a soul knife and you near that jab doesn't break concentration. Fawn. Make me a concentration check for failing that badly. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Oh, All dear. right. That's that's very fair. I think. Please roll oh. in that one. I don't want to roll in that one. I want to roll in that. you to. Uh, whatever. I don't concentrate on anymore. Whatever. That's no, fine. you're not concentrating anymore. But you do see on on hearing Mint's voice, um, Elzarina kind of pokes her head out from around behind her mother. I mean, she, the child still looks terrified and panicked. She's actually kind of worried now that this this voice in her head that she's now hearing is is an is a physical threat versus a a mental threat. So she's still really worried, obviously. You can tell that just by looking at her, even without <laughs> concentrating on her freak out. Maybe maybe I shouldn't go inside her mind also. Maybe that'd be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe you shouldn't. That'd probably be a really... Um, Sounds like a great idea. And um, she looks around and she's, she's still very, very worried, but she, now she's voice still as a possible uh, source of threat. Um, she will focus on you, but it is going to take in a, in in the chaos. It is going to take her a minute to find you, Mint. Um, to everybody else, I'm assuming approaches the guard captain. Ye. I mean, Mint yeah. is approaching the captain, so okay. So he he waits for you all to gather around and he kind of gestures to where the imp was and to fawn, and he kind of almost in a very gruff growly I've been doing this for way too many years uh, voice goes and what do you know of this thing? Uh, <laughs> can I think about what I know about that thing? Can I roll to know what I know about that, that, that thing? He, he's not he's, he, he knows what it is he's more asking in a kind of how did you guys react faster than my guards? Uh, we, we rolled a good initiative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't say, because that would be out of character. Uh, he he I, I, is, I, he's concerned that you guys have something to do with this at this point. I would work on disabusing him of that notion. Okay. I reckon I've been doing this for quite a while now. So I, I don't know, I'm, to... I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you make it a habit of going from party to party, fighting off these things? Well, we were not going to just let it kill her, were we? And I thank you for that. But... Where did it come from? Well, I believe that <laughs> might be a question for someone else. It this... appeared to come out of nowhere. Mint actually motions to the cannon on her back and says, Well, did it look like it came from here? Look, are you accusing us of such an action? He's obviously not focused on here in the group as the rest of you. I haven't seen you all be here before. And now this thing attacks. Pawn, our greatest treasure. I am concerned at the way you reacted to it. Yes, I know you destroyed it, but perhaps that was to throw off um, the scent. Uh, I'm not that smart. Also, I'm pretty famous myself. Uh, I would like to try to persuade this guard that it wasn't us. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. uh, can I view okay. the aura while doing so? Can I so, guide him to yeah. yes. persuade you can, correctly? You can view aura and try and persuade him, and mint you can guidance him. Okay. So you uh, get you... what a plus one for guidance, right? Mint, no, or does uh, it give you one advantage? D4. Okay, you get a okay. How do you so get you the get choose one. higher one? The advantage thing? Uh, yes, you get... okay, it's two D twenty K one. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, two D twenty K one plus whatever your modifier is. Plus uh persuasion. 
is not that good, but whatever. <laughs> that is not good at all. <laughs> That's minus one. Uh, oh. pl plus what? One d four. What was it? Yeah, it's one d four. No. Oh my god! Hey, boy. What? What? It's working. What? <laughs> what? Nope. 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 Nice. Nope. Nope. We got we it. Cause have uh, answered. Well, um, yes, the gods have answered your prayers, and he, with a nat twenty, even without with with two nat twenties, even oh, without what, guidance. Two, I didn't even notice that. Oh god! You got two nat twenties. <laughs> what is me with rolling the what same? What the number? heck? No. <laughs> okay, no. Here's the thing. Um, in the future, don't roll guidance with your roll because you can choose not to roll guidance. Okay, but like guidance a cantrip, right? So it's, it's not a like cantrip. It's I can use it whenever the heck I want. I just have to touch you in the last for a minute. Okay, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> I was assuming the way he's need it, but apparently not. So yeah, even if you hadn't used a guidance, and even with your minus modifier, I would have given that to you with rolling two nat 20s. Yeah, he totally believes that you guys had absolutely nothing to do with this, and you guys have just had enough experience um, in, in, in fighting battles, finding weird things, that you were able to react that quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, you guys also... Oh, shoot. Audio thing. Again, the minute we talk. No. Okay, it's I, I bumped <laughs> the cable again. Um, he totally, <laughs> guys, you know that that you guys uh, have a lot of experience and could react faster. Plus, you guys were on alert. He doesn't know that you guys knew something was kind of off with Elzarina being freaked out because he doesn't know this. Um, but so he 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 totally completely able to convince him. That's why he no longer believes that you had anything to do with this and in fact he now wants your help <laughs> solving this problem wow. because his guards are going to be overwhelmed controlling the crowds he is getting a little ins he's going to insist that you help I mean Min's already accepted yeah it's yes. okay My for those of you who haven't accepted Mint you alcoholic <laughs> No, that's not the reason. It's genuinely accepting. No, I, I understand. Mint, actually, you would have proffered your help. But I'm assuming everyone else is going to take him up on his... Uh, um... Sure. Yeah. Okay. Ivy? You gonna help? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I kind of yeah, I, I mumbled okay. that somewhere in there, but I wasn't loud enough. Okay. Um. So he's going. He's going to kind of take you, show you, uh, over to Fawn. Um, she's starting to recover and and come up a little bit, but she's still completely freaked out and stressed. And he picks up a piece of paper on the ground and he and he holds it up and midnight you know I railroad it in. So sorry, you you you're getting my, my tiny bit of I I changed something wrong because I wanted to make sure you guys got this. Um a piece of paper and he hands it to you and I have to post it in um Come here. St Sorry, my computer's acting. Pain in my buddy. Um, it's it's a uh... stop it, computer. It's a piece of paper with a bunch of uh, um, lines on it. Um, if it would let me attach them. 